Welcome, everyone, to the SDH look at everything going on in the USL Championship, the way that we always do things. We will go backward before we go forward. Very, very busy sprint for everything that is going on in the league at present. And it gives us a chance to look backward and gets us a chance to get squared away and go forward, give you all the news that's fit to print and all the news and notes heading in USL Championship as we continue to roll forward and get you ready for the postseason, which is coming up just around the corner. Let's go back once again. No dilly, no dally zone here, so we'll go back to the midweek and let you know what's going on. Wednesday, it was very, very crowded in the midweek. Full time at Ricardo Silva, seven goal thriller, and Loose City did not leave Miami or Boca Raton with full points. The Miami FC got the win at home, a 4 3 thriller. The Miami FC getting a big three points. Sean Tosh scored in the 15th in front of a crowd of just over 1,000 with Elvis Osmanovich, your man in the middle. Sorto scored in the 32nd to tie it at 1. Calvin Harris scored to make it 2-1 early second half. Then Rivas scores to make it 2-2. Gabriel DeFreitas scores in the 78th after Sean Tosh had given Lou City the temporary lead at 3-2. DeFreitas scores. Rivas got his brace from the spot in the 86th. And that would be the margin right there. Uh, Blue City could not come up with an equalizer. The Miami FC gets the win 4-3 on the board. Birmingham and Memphis, 9-0-1. Uh, honors even after 90 at Protective with a 1-1 draw. San Diego Loyal goes to Cardinal and loses to, and beats Monterey Bay by the final of 3-2. Sacramento Republic at Hard Health. New Mexico United, a goalless draw. And at the corner of 38th and Washington, Phoenix Rising and the boys in blue Indy 11. Had a 1-1 draw. That takes us to Saturday. Lou City got a win on the 23rd, knocking off Loudon by the final of 2-1. So it was a three-point week for Lou City as they're trying to solidify their spot in the playoffs. At high mark, Pittsburgh knocked off to Mexico United, who goes from Sacramento to the other end of the country to play Pittsburgh. Loses 2-1 at high mark. Big uh, win there for Pittsburgh as they're still at the top of the East. Charleston did the same at Patriots Point, beating FC Tulsa by the final of 2-1. At Keyworth, the Detroit City over Hartford Athletic by the final of 3-0, and that gets us to our first match of the week in the Eastern Conference. It's at Al Lang. Memphis 901 goes to Al Lang to take on the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. I told so he had a target on his back. Let's do this. Memphis and Tampa Bay underway from LA. And there's no lumberjack at the back to pick out at the last post. It has to be Kleeman and company. Hilton puts this one in motion in a really good spot and headed in by JJ Williams. Perfect delivery. He drew the keeper right into the play, and all any road he had to do is get a touch on it. And J.J. Williams got there first, but that extra step in short. Little crossover in the neighborhood of Ekra. Jan Ekra just picked the pocket of the opposition. And now here comes Tampa Bay. Jennings, a run. Kyle Jennings, score! Number 15 on the season. For Look at Jan Ekram coming from midfield, just carving up the defense. Now he's in on goal with that first step through. And look at the finish into corner Sparrow's last post. But it all started with a high press that we're seeing right now from 901, disrupting the Rowdies as they try to play out at the back. Counter press, of course, conjures up so many goals as we see here again. Once again, Memphis threatening, and that one is in. Da Costa strikes once again for the visitors, and we are level at one. Well, the counter press works to perfection. Look at this. Jan Ekra got caught, and look at Rodrigo Da Costa. He looks off his man. Have goals for both teams. Jennings oh. and Da Costa, and here comes Cal Jennings again. Jennings in another foot race, crosses it back. And scores again! Unbelievable! This guy is like a video game. Drew, he's played in. 
This is something out of nothing. Williams to flick on. Now Smith is in position. This is like the Turchi round the Brazilian. He takes him on. And look at the finish, the confidence. He pulls this right, finishes this left. Game over. Asking for the foul. Excellent defense by Graham Smith. Memphis quick striking here tonight. Another chance. Put it in front of goal and score. Da Costa. One more time. And we're level at two. Well, J.J. Williams is asking the question, but Memphis's press works again. They completely stifle the Rowdies, and McFadden gets his third assist in three games. Consecutive goals against the Rowdies now. Here's Fernando. A lovely touch by the Costa, and back into the arms, or the feet rather, of the Costa. But it all starts with the press. The ball right into his living room. Hilton. Come short with it, Perez. Kleeman gonna drive. Oh, off the crossbar. Ekra. Dennis trying to fight for position, wins possession. Well done by 14. He'll send it in. Rome got a piece of it. Back and forth, making a great target for everyone else. Been a hands battle tonight. Dennis. Oh! By a fingernail, nearly tucked it in to that top corner. This goes to the keeper side with pace. Rumi comes back across, gets a hand to it. Good save in the end. He leaned left, then went back right. Download now. E Football 2024. Take my advice. Anybody looking for a good footing. Oh! This ball. Is it the feet of Da Costa? The open net, and Memphis will make the Rowdies pay. What a play! Collisions all over the pitch. This Carriaga's ball, brilliant. Sparrows in two minds. Da Costa got there. There's the follow through. But look at Carriaga following up the play, and a beautiful bit of technique. Costa's control, beautiful. Da Costa again, Memphis running once more. And that ball deflected out of bounds, Sparrow comes over. Here's the turn from Jennings. Jennings, a great spot. Williams, oh, tremendous save from Romig. J.J. Williams. Once again, here's Carriega, Hardy. Sitting on a goal from Memphis, and again it's Da Costa. He scores, and he's got the hat trick. Rodrigo Da Costa. Last, but here it is again. Here's Carriaga taking the ball right down to Clemont. Now he looks over to his left, and guess what? Jordan Doherty completely leaves Da Costa by himself. But defending has been a challenge tonight. This Memphis team, they've had a plan. Here's Lucky. Coming right back, and it has been just so close. 2023, so close. But Jordan Dorothy trying to make up for that mistake, bends it around. What a ball into the path of Lucky Abkosana. And boy, Tampa Bay really went into a lull there, Ryan. I did not like that last 10 minutes. Here's Jennings. Corner kick. Well, if you want to see this again. Top of his game, ball over the top by Lewis Hilton. Look at the little bump by Carl Jennings. Boop, right there. There goes a key Ward. He's in on goal. Carl Jennings, of course. JJ Williams is great as well. Lucky looking for position here. Jennings. Jennings. <laughs> Goodness. Able to stay on his feet. Dennis. From that corner, Antley, and that'll do it full time. Big three points on the road as Memphis clinches a postseason berth. Rodrigo da Costa with the natural brace on his way to the hat trick for Memphis 901. Carriaga scoring in the 67th, the recent pickup for head coach Stephen Glass. Goals by Cal Jennings in the 17th and the 32nd gave him his first half brace as well. And it was just the work of Memphis in the second 45 that gave them full points 
at Al Lang. Also, Colorado Springs switchbacks in a beautiful downtown Colorado Springs at Widener Field, knockoff Sacramento 2 0. Toyota Field, big win for San Antonio, beating Orange County by the final of 4 0. El Paso Locomotive in Phoenix Rising at Southwest University Park, a 1 1 draw. And at Pioneer, it is the other game of the week Monterey Bay and Oakland Roots. Here's your highlights, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship, ESPN Plus, and YouTube. Three weeks away from Decision Day, and we're underway in Hayward, California. Happy to have you with us this evening alongside Ricky Lopez Espin. I'm Joe Malfa. Here of Maury Doner and Wilmer Martinez and Tamakas on the far side. So something to keep an eye on. Watch out here. Comes through for Galito. Has somebody running across with him. It's Dixon! What a start for Monterey Bay on the road! Alex Dixon, a dozen goals on his season. He looked like it was always going to come down to Sam Glidal and Alex Dixon just to test the shape of the Oka Roots, but give credit to Sam Glidal because the timing, the unselfishness, puts his ball into the path of Alex Dixon. As he draws in Emmer Clementa, you tell your special player, Alex Dixon, your leading goal scorer, go out and make a difference. Those playoffs are just right around the corner, as we keep on mentioning. And that's the team Oakland sees next, which makes this game all the more important because it's that now seemingly back on track San Antonio team. A try from distance here. Blanchett diving and making the stop. Surprised by the quick strike. Now from the corner. He's all the way through for Reed. Trayvon Reed through the traffic. Hackshaw. His service. Out for Reed. Reed, the switch, the touch, the hit, the stop from Carlos Herrera. And the 12th goal of the year for Dixon. Sneakily, the driving force out of the midfield in their attack lead. Easy to lose sight of him. This one played over the top for Anwar Pelais, and he drives it wide. Luciano, Rodriguez, served in by Tamakas on the ground, Barbier! What a moment for Danny Barbier! The most consistent center back on the team at the other end, nets a goal and we're level! His outside backs and his wing backs play with, Memo Diaz provides it with, so that gives Danny Barbier the ability just to join the attack as he sees fit. Gets himself in a very dangerous area. Shot for Brian Tamakis gets deflected. But talk about the composure from Danny Barbier. Collects himself, draws out Herrera. Simple finish. Don't forget he was on that U17 team with Christian Pulisic and friends. And maybe that's one healer on the training ground with them on the attacking. And here we go again for Pelais. But the offside flag is up. So much of this half has been played at this end of the field. Finally got the goal. Oakland now looking for more. Reed scoops it. Rodriguez is header. It's just over the bar. Baca looking back. And with that comes the halftime whistle. A lively first half between two rivals here in the Bay Area. It started quickly. Alex Dixon three minutes in. Anwar Pelais driving ahead. Johnny Rodriguez, Trayvon Reed. One thing that seemingly hasn't changed in the second half is it's ahead now to Rodriguez, but wide. It was Doric Formella who scored the goal for Phoenix, by the way, helping out his former team in the Oakland Roots. Coming through now, Ugo Akoli! That won't help the Roots! Akoli puts Monterey Bay ahead! Hugo Coley, he just gives you that presence on the top line. And sometimes you just want it that little bit more between him, the Ville Hackshaw, and Emmer Clemento. Who was going to rise above the challenge? Who's going to get on the end of it? Great first touch to create that little bit of separation. And just wrong foots, Paul Blanchett. The player striker to produce that little bit of indiv individual brilliance. And they've all come in the last five games. Man in form at the right time, that's a nasty challenge. 
yellow and may be lucky for it to only be so. Opposing keeper. To get creative in how they've manufactured goals this year. Set pieces have come in handy. Now it's Diaz. This one won't come in so handy. So Daniel tries one, why not? Skips right in front of Herrera. And he smothers it. Straight at Herrera, easy save for the goalkeeper Monterey Bay. And watch out once again. Graciano, a wise foul after Tamacas. Jai lining up to launch this one, gets a running start from on the track. And launch it, he does. Top of the six, almost fell for Moran. Hackshaw off the post and in! Nabil Hackshaw! Wow, what a moment! We're level! Good things happen when you whip the ball into a dangerous area. Moments ago, talking about Neville Hackshaw. He just has a luxury to give you the ability to break lines with his passing, but also gives you the ability to create something out of nothing. So instinctual, looking like a number nine, the overhead kick, not even a courtesy dive from Herrera, disbelief. All throughout the Monterey Bay players, but take a bow, Neville Hackshaw. And there's the final whistle. A thriller in the Battle of the Bay between the Oakland Roots and Monterey Bay FC for the first time. So honors even as Oakland and Monterey Bay are still trying to solidify their spots in the postseason in the Western Conference. That got us to Sunday. RGV on the road beat the boys in blue at the mic 1-0. Torero 1-1 draw between Vegas Lights and San Diego Loyal. And the Miami FC, six-point week, go to protective and knock off Birmingham by the final of 2-0 in the Eastern Conference. So that sets things up with the standings with only a handful of matches to go. We'll start things off in the East. Five teams have now clinched postseason berths. We just need to know the where. Pittsburgh right now unbeaten in five. They've won three in a row. They're at 60 points. Charleston at 56 points. They've also won four of five. Tampa Bay with the loss has hit each column in their last three. They're at 54 Memphis 901 and Lou City are both at 49. Memphis is ahead on goal difference, 6 to nil. So that way, that's your four and your five. Indy 11, starting group number three, they are sixth at 42 points. They have not won in their last three matches. Neither have Birmingham Legion, who are in seventh right now, and they are at 40 points. Detroit City now north of the playoff bar, having won three of five and two of three. And they are now in eighth place. FC Tulsa is a point out of the playoffs right now. 31 matches played. So this is big for Detroit City. Detroit City has a match in hand. The Miami FC with the two-game win streak trying to draw themselves back in the chase for the eight. They're at 35 points now at 9-14 and 8. Loudon and Hartford have been eliminated from postseason play. Loudon has only one point in their last five matches. They're at 25 points. And Hartford Athletic, who got off to the dreadful start. They've lost five in a row. They're at 421 and four. 29 matches played. They've got two that they have to make up. And they're at 16 points in the West. Only two teams have clinched their playoff spots. Sacramento and San Antonio at 55 points and 54, respectively. San Diego's at 47 points. They have one more win than Phoenix Rising at 13. Phoenix Rising is at 12. Orange County is at three. Orange County has the worst goal difference of the three, and San Diego has one more win than Phoenix Rising does. So 13 wins, 12 wins, 14 wins, and that is where we are with the three, the four, and the five. Switchbacks are at 43 points. They're unbeaten in their last three. Roots only have one point in their last five matches. Monterey Bay has won three in their last five. They're at 41 points, but they're behind Roots on goal difference. Now, playoff picture. El Paso in ninth at 40 points. They've hit each column once in their last three. RGV, 38 points, but they've won two in a row. They've played 30 matches. They have a match in hand on Monterey Bay. Then New Mexico United is at 37 points. They've hit each column in their last three. 10, 14, and 7 after 31 matches. Obviously, only one team has been eliminated so far. And it's the Vegas Lights there at 19 points with a record of 3, 18, and 10. Let's get you into the news that has gone on in the USL Championship Team of the Week. Once again, brought to us by our friends at Konami eFootball, Rodrigo da Costa, 
Memphis 901. He gets the Player of the Week honors for Week 29 after getting his first career hat trick in the game that was the Eastern Conference Game of the Week for us. Big win for him, a big night for him at Al Lang, and a big win for Memphis 901, especially in the midseason trade. Philip Goodrum for Rodrigo da Costa seems to have benefited both clubs, and right now Memphis 901 is in the postseason in the East. In net, big week for Jake McGuire of the Miami FC, a 12-save shutout in that 2-0 win against Legion. Most saves in a game in the USL Championship this year is tied for second most in a shutout in league history. Back line of three, Joe Farrell from Pittsburgh, Matt Lewis, Detroit City, Arturo Ordonez from Riverhounds. Midfield, Carlos Harvey from Phoenix Rising, Taylor Davila from RGV, Canardo Forbes from Pittsburgh, Nathan Fogaccia on loan from Portland to San Antonio FC. Scored his second goal in as many matches, adding an assist in the 4-0 win against Orange County. Rodrigo da Costa naturally at forward along with Joaquin Rivas and Fidel Barajas from the Miami FC and from Charleston Battery, respectively. Bench, Nathan Steinwasher in net for Detroit City, along with Aiden McFadden from Memphis, Michael Bryant from Detroit City, Dylan Mayers from Lou City, Gabriel Cabral from the Miami FC, Cal Jennings from Tampa, and Xavi Nalati from San Diego Loyal. That's your Team of the Week, brought to us by our friends at Konami eFootball. Save of the Week for Week 29, and that one is, uh, once again, Available for vote until Friday at noon Eastern. It's a little different. It's a little different than the USL League One voting. Friday, noon Eastern, fans' choice for Save of the Week. Steinwasher from Detroit City. Danny Vidiello from Sacramento. Tim Trilk from Indy 11. Jake McGuire as a part of his 12, uh, as part of his 12 save effort. So it is Steinwasher, Vidiello, Tim Trook, and Jake McGuire. You can vote through all the USL social media cha- the media channels, USL Championship, and the USL app. Fans' choice for goal of the week for week 29. You can vote till Thursday at noon. So once again, USL Championship, goal of the week, Thursday at noon, League 1 till 1230. Friday's the same thing. Save of the week at noon on uh, Friday. And for USL Championship and for League 1, it is 1230 on your Friday afternoon. So your champ, uh, championship fans' choice goal of the week for Week 29, Barajas from Charlotte, Wilson Harris from Lou City, uh, Jairo Enriquez from Colorado Springs, and Neville Hackshaw from Oakland. So that's your four, Barajas, Harris, Enriquez, and Hackshaw. Vote on all of your USL championship platforms, all your USL championship social media, and on the USL app. Once again, be a part of... The fan process, you can get into the fan zone every single week. Go to uslchampionship.com, click on the right link on the right-hand side of the page, and you can be a part of things through the fan zone at USL Championship. And also don't forget that you can also be a part of their social media conversations on the 280-character app on the Facebook and on the Instagram. Follow along in USL Championship. Power rankings for Week 29. We'll go through the Eastern Conference, and we'll go through the top ten, and we'll go through all the rest of the Eastern Conference. So, Pittsburgh stays at one. Charleston up three to number two. San Antonio up six to number three. They're not the biggest mover of the week. Memphis 901 is up from 11 to four. Phoenix Rising, that means they drop down two to number five. Switchbacks are up four to number six. Rowdies with the loss are down five to number seven. Lou City stays at eight. Sacramento drops three to nine. Orange County drops six to number 10. Uh, other teams in the Eastern Conference, uh, Detroit City up three to 12. It is Indy 11 down three to 15. The Miami FC with their wins up six to 16, which means FC Tulsa's down three to 17. Legion are down one to 18. It is uh, Loudon down two to 23. And Hartford Athletic, obviously, with a record of 421 and four, are dead last at number 24. 21 goals allowed from dead ball situations for Hartford Athletic this year. And that is uh, one of the more challenging things that Hartford Athletic has had to deal with and have not been able to stop set pieces all season long when it comes to uh, trying to get points and when it comes to uh, Hartford Athletic. Uh, Memphis 901 has made a roster move, getting ready for uh, the tail end of the regular season and the playoff run. Former Mexico Youth International Uh, Richard Sanchez, via transfer from Hartford Athletic, completed prior to the roster freeze back on Friday. Sanchez available for selection in the contest against Birmingham Legion 
Former Mexico Youth International arrives more than 30 MLS appearances under his belt. FC Dallas, Chicago Fire. Spent time with Tigris in three years between stints for Dallas and Chicago. 16 national team caps for El Tri at the U17 and U20 level. So pick up right at the, uh, the roster freeze deadline for Memphis 901. Richard Sanchez coming in from Hartford Athletic. Now, with all that news in the barn, time to get you into the schedule and get you ready for the weekend and what it's going to look like in USL Championship with the matchups coming up on the midweek and on the weekend. So let's run them all down for you. There's a lot, and there's a lot of juice boxes. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock, Hartford Athletic hosting Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's a road favorite at a minus 122. Hartford is a plus 275 at home. 7.30 Eastern at Keyworth. Detroit City hosting Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs is a slight road favorite at a plus 152 in the composite. Detroit City is a plus 168. Your draw is a plus 223. Detroit City has to turn around and be one of the 7 o'clock games on Saturday night. They go to Indianapolis, where they are a dog against Indy 11 at a minus 106. Detroit City is a plus 265. Also at 7 o'clock, Hartford Athletic north of plus 410 goes to Ricardo Silva to take on the Miami FC at a minus 167. Pittsburgh and FC Tulsa. Pittsburgh a minus 263 at Highmark. Tulsa north of plus 605 on the composite. 730 Tampa Bay, a win they need. Loudon could give it to them at a plus 614. Tampa Bay is a minus 256. 8 o'clock, Widener Field. Colorado Springs hosting RGV. They're favored at a minus 110. RGV is a plus 276. Memphis and Birmingham, early contender for match of the week. 901 is a minus 120, draws a plus 254, and Birmingham is a plus 291. 9 o'clock, New Mexico at the lab. New Mexico United hosting Lou City, and Lou City is a plus 183 as an underdog. New Mexico is a plus 127, and your draw is a plus 239. El Paso and Charleston. El Paso is... At home at 9.30, a plus 135 as Charleston comes to town at a plus 173. Draws a plus 237. 10 o'clock, Oakland Roots hosting San Antonio. Roots are a plus 214. San Antonio on the road basically favored at half of that at a plus 108. Loyal hosting Monterey Bay at a minus 159. Monterey Bay is a plus 370. Draws a plus 279. Phoenix rising at the corner 38th and Washington hosting Orange County. Even money at a plus 100 Orange County. Is a plus 236, draws a plus 245. One game on Sunday, 7 o'clock Eastern time at Hard Health. Vegas Lights at a plus 600 on the road, taking on Sacramento Republic, who are a minus 278. That is all the information that you need heading into this weekend. Once again, folks are in when it comes to the postseason, just don't know the positioning. Some folks want to get in, have to fix their positioning. If you are in market to catch second division soccer here in the United States, please do so. Fantastic work in all of these markets with all these teams to show you the the best of the second division and what their chase is as they all try and figure out uh, what their futures are in the sport of soccer. Is it first division? Is it overseas? Or is it becoming a legend in USL Championship? We find that out on a daily basis. Also, if you uh, cannot make it, if you're in market, follow along on your local providers. If, once again, you can't follow along, or you can't be there in person, want to follow along on local providers and are out of market, you can also do so on ESPN+, Plus, the home of the USL Championship, every single match, all season long. For everybody here at SDH, that's the rundown of everything going on in USL Championship. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy your game.